All right, I've gone ahead and I have marked my um, top rails at nine inches all the way across. You can see my black lines. And I've done it on the swedged end here. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead down 18 inches from my mark here. And I'm gonna make another mark 18 inches down. And then every 18 inches after that, 18 inches from each previous mark. All right, so all we have to do for this is be really good at counting by nines. So we got our first mark at nine. And I'm gonna go 18 from there. I could move the tape measure 18 inches and just keep it at 18 and just move it and set it at the previous mark and measure 18 from here and 18 for the next one. But let's just do a little math, all right? Nine plus 18 is 27 plus nine, 36 plus nine, 45, all right? I should make sure this is on one point here. Good, it is. We got 45, all right? Then we got 54, then we got 63. The next mark is at 63. 72, 81. 99. 117. And that'll finish it for us. And then I'll move on to the next one. So, uh oh. Who oh, no, knows about the Sharpie wet? You might be out of Sharpie. Oh well. So, I'll do that for the rest of these, all the way across, each of those 18 inch marks. And then we can actually start bending. Um, I do have the bender set up here. Not right on my trailer. It's very sturdy. It's in a metal. You know, the trailer's got this metal back here. So, it's very sturdy. You don't have to worry about tearing out of like wood or something like that by putting too much weight on there so we're gonna get bending after we mark things up okay if you're wondering why i'm putting these sharpie marks on here um you're, it's not essential but i am marking them out every 18 inches because i want my radiuses of each pole to be about the same i want the radiuses to be roughly the same and so i want to be bending them in roughly the same place Here's where it started to get a little windy, guys, so I'm gonna jump in here. This is a helper handle. It's a small rod, this green rod here, that slides into the end of your fencing, your top rail. It's designed so it does not fit into the swedged end. The swedged end is the narrow end, as opposed to the end that is the same diameter as the rest of the pipe. So the helper handle slides into the end that is normal, not different from the rest of the pipe. And it's used to get leverage when you are bending the last bit of your pipe here because it's it's hard to pull down on it when you don't have much to hold. You'll see in just a minute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up my first Sharpie mark with the outside of the collar here, outside being the side furthest from me. Then we're going to start bending here. So this is the first one I'm bending here. And I was very happy with how easy it was to bend it. So then I'm going to move it to my next Sharpie mark at 18 inches, so 27 inches. And give it another bend. Now as I put the pipe through that collar, I need to make sure I'm keeping it straight because it's possible that it can turn either to the left or to the right with our setup here. So I wanna make sure I'm keeping it perfectly straight so I don't have some strange bends in my hoop. It won't be much of a hoop. So the first one turned out well. You'll see as I get to the end here, this is where the helper handle handle comes in uh, very handy. One thing about my setup I would have changed, I would have put that green bender up higher. That would have given me more leverage. My far end was starting to curve down and hit the ground, and the ground was getting in the way a little bit. Um, so I would have definitely put it up higher. But putting it to the back of the trailer was plenty sturdy enough. 
Now here what I'm doing is I'm attaching these two uh, hoops together to make one half hoop here. And I'm just making sure they're laying flat. There's nothing setting under it. Sticks, leaves, anything that would make it not be straight here. And then we're just gonna pre-drill a small hole and then we'll put a screw in there to hold them together. All right, this one's ready to go. Let's do a, a test fit here and make sure if everything turns out like this one that they're all gonna work. Now, it was a little tricky doing this by myself. I would definitely recommend having two people for this part. What I found was I'd get one end in and then I'd go to get the other end in. And when I sprung it back in, because it's a little bigger than it needs to be, and that's on purpose, when I would bend it back in to get the second side in, the first side would slide as far into the grounding rod as it could go. And then that wouldn't give me enough pipe or hoop to, to get the second end in. So I'd have to go back, lift it up, and what I tried to do is I tried to have the swedged end be where I'm standing now, and then I would rest the collar of the swedge, where the swedge transitions into normal pipe diameter. I try to rest that on the top of the grounding rod. Even though that's not as deep as it'll be eventually, that'll at least give me a starting point so I can get this side in here now. And then I'm just gonna put them in so that the first Sharpie line at nine inches is resting on the top of the grounding rod. Okay. You can see it slid away there again. Oh now the God. reason you want these bigger yeah. than your actual hoop house, um, and you want to be able to spring them back towards the ground rods, is that's going to give them extra strength. So later on in the season, if you're keeping the plastic on and there's snow, this, because they're, they're, you're forcing them to push upward as you're springing the two legs together, you're giving it more strength. It's less likely to collapse because it's already resisting a top payload. So there we go, we got that in there. All right. Hey guys, look, it's my greenhouse. So originally I had bought 14 pieces of top rail. Uh, 12 of them were going to be the hoops, two for each of the six hoops. And then the two remaining were going to be my top rail or my top purlin in the center at the top of the greenhouse for support rigidity to hold it all together basically. And as I was looking at all my pieces here, I realized I had 12 pieces right here and I'd already installed two of them so in my zeal to get everything put together for the video I accidentally bent them all and didn't realize that till afterwards so I had to run back down to the fencing company uh, about an hour away and get two more pieces to finish this project which you'll see later on Oh, 
How many do I have? One, two, three. All right. I don't want people to know I'm awake. That's right. Sorry. I'm going to pretend like you're still asleep. How many do I have now, buddy? One, two, three, four. Wow, you're good at this. Yeah. Alright, do you want to come stand by number one? Hey buddy, please don't do that. Mm. If you want to be in my movie, why don't you come over here and help me? Okay. <laughs> okay. We have our hoop house. Right. Is this the chicken's house? Not the chicken's house. We need our gardening house. Now we gotta get a drill. We'll pre-drill all this. What's that, buddy? Uh, no, it's mommy and daddy. Yep. Right. Sure you can dance on it. Let me see you dance. Oh yeah. You get your moves. Looks like a stage. Looks like a stage, you're right. Yeah. You get your moves from daddy. What? You get your dance moves from daddy. Daddy I try. You need to try? Yeah. Only if you do it with me. Great, high five. All right, done. <laughs>